Hello. Today on my desk I've got a PRC 352 Manpack Tactical VHF radio used by a British Army. And I say PRC 352. And if you are into a Clansman series, you are going to notice that this radio looks like PRC 351. And yes, you are correct. The PRC 351 is this receive and transmit unit. But if you add an amplifier, you are converting that PRC 351 into a PRC 352. So that's why you might be confused. Over here, the setup is not that very commonly used because over here I've got a hand crank generator and because this is a tactical VHF radio it's most likely used on the a short distance and with a power amplifier you would like to have a 4 amp hour battery not a 1 amp hour because it's a power hungry device so you will have a lot of cranking and because this is a tactical VHF for a short range communication, you most likely will have uh, able to recharge your 4 amp hour battery or get a spare one. So this is not a device that you are going to take into like a motens, very, very remote area and rely on the hand grain generator. Most likely you are going to use this setup or on a PRC like HF, for example, 320, or the Special Forces, the 319. So if you are going to long distance, very far away, you would like to use a hand crank generator with a quantum power battery. And this is the same size, like a 4 amp hour battery. But for power amplifier, you most likely you would like to get a 4 amp hour battery. But it doesn't mean you cannot use that. So let's take a look what we've got over here. I've got a carrying frame, which I don't really like it. I'm very, very enjoy using the, the backpack, which was designed for a lot of PRC series radio. It's quite heavy. So, this is our battery, 1 amp hour, and it's connected directly to the hand crank generator. I'm going to make a separate video on this. Next, we've got a power amplifier under that VNC connector. We've got our, our switch for selecting the, the band that we would like to use. And this is the output for the antenna, as you can see. So over here we are going to hook up uh, external antenna. Most likely we are going to use a Klansman GSA, the ground spike antenna. But right now I'm going to put our, our coax. And we are going to take a look on the radio itself. So this is our receive and transmit. I'm going to disconnect the, the surf unit. And this is our radio. We can grab only that element, hook up with battery, and we can operate that. No problem, we do not need the, the surf unit and the amplifier and the hand crank generator. So you can be a very portable on that. Let's see what we've got. So first of all, over here is our on-off switch, which right now, oops, which right now reads zero. I hope you can, or maybe that will be better. Right now read zero, which is and off. We have option whisper, which will be 
increasing our microphone sensitivity and we've got our loud which is going to increase the audio output of the handset or the headset and turn lower the sensitivity of the microphone in case we are using this device in loud environment and the last one the asterix I'm not sure if that's visible okay that one is bypassing the squelch circuitry so we are going to hear everything not only the transmission that are going through the squelch circuit so we can operate any radio that's that are not using the because some of them i believe they are using 150 hertz squelch tone or the just the just the carrier squelch so if we go over here we can we can hear every transmission so right now i'm going to go to the off and over here we've got a socket for connecting the whip antenna We are going to connect over there antenna like that. This is a short whip elastic antenna about 0.6 meter and it has a very nice way of hooking it up because we have to press and go like that and we undo that screw. Okay. But of course we can also use like a metal section antenna, the rod antenna, which will be over one meter length. We do not have to do any tuning, everything is done automatically. Of course it's a compromise, but it's working, working very well. This radio is about 4 watt output, so you do not need any, any tuning and matching device on that knob over there the four knob you can set the frequency as you can see I'm in the ISM band because I was trying to listen to the baby monitor to test the receiver circuitry and it was okay so I know it's working over here we've got broken but output for the BNC external antenna and this is a very important this is the standard BNC socket commonly used and it's very important to use only one antenna you are going to use either the the whip antenna or the BNC so over here you can connect directly an antenna like the ground spike antenna and you do not, do not need anything else. But in case you would like to operate in the close range with another radio like this, then you will get a problem with the interference between the two radio radiating too close together and then you would like to use this device which is a surf selected unit radio frequency. I believe that's the proper name of that. And you tune this device and it's like blocking any RF except the one that you put. So I believe it's like not a low cut filter, no, no the high frequency, the low, but like the center. So you, I believe you, you find the cavity, right? and then it's passing the, the frequency. And I'm pretty sure that was designed specifically for the, the Klansman frequency width that it's utilizing. So this is, this is not the, the antenna tuner. This is not a matching box. Some people are saying that this is an antenna tuner, but it's not. You've got your, under that flap, if you press over here, You've got your tuning dial and when you're transmitting you're going to press that element which release that, that, that turn knob and you are going to 
find the the highest deflection of the needle and this is your the cavity that's creating the largest amount of pass so you are tuning that for your antenna to pass all the rf to the to the antenna but how you are doing that you are going to need to hook up your selective unit into the BNC output and as you can see you've got a very short cable so we are going to put it like that okay and now what because you cannot use this socket because they are using the BNC so we have to go to the other side and as you can see we've got a similar output where you can put your antenna and you can put your whip antenna over here then you can check the set the right pass frequency by using the needle and you can operate on the whip if you are not going to get the maximum deflection which will be the best pass frequency you are going to get a severely reduct the range because that's what this device is doing it's blocking the frequency other frequency and over here you've got another BNC output you can either choose that one for the whip or that one if you would like to use the external antenna for example like the the ground spank antenna or most likely you can also use the the vehicle antenna that have a built-in that antenna tuner so that's the output and some people are saying that you that because that device is rated for forward and some people are saying you cannot use this while operating the amplifier which is not true you can use this device on the amplifier and it's very very good to use because it will block any any frequency that are not desirable before amplification so it's highly recommend to use this device with an amplifier but you cannot use this as an output stage after amplifier because you are going to burn it because it's rated for for what you have to use it before before next to the radio and before the amplification so we are going to follow exactly that setup as you can see we are going to get our forward signal into the tuning unit into the selective frequency and from that point as you can see over here we've got our antenna output so i'm going to unplug that coax and I'm going to grab that coax from the bottom and I'm going to hook it up into output of the selective unit and now you hook up your antenna over here so what is going to happen and the small signal that are coming in they are going to be blocked first by the selective unit and then go to the radio and your signal that is driving the amplifier is going to, from the forward box to the input so yes you can operate no problem with uh, a selective unit with the amplifier but never connect in reverse so never connect your your amplifier output to the surf because you are going to burn it and from the from the back of the radio you can see we've got a two audio output and we've got an another something that is interesting we've got another knob over here and that that knob is labeled over here you can see the option we've got like a local we've got remote outdoor 
uh, rebroadcast, intercom, and the call. And that's what's going to be used on the external handset or connecting two radios together for retransmission by using a two-wire telephone line. And there is a handset that you can just hook up directly and you can go like about, I believe, half kilometer apart just with a two-wire cable and you can use your, your radio remotely. You can, of course, connect two radios together, so put them in the distance and you can pick up one signal on one radio and retransmit via another radio everything by just uh, two wires. And I'm going to to make a video about it when I get a handset and the, 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 the device that allow you to connect two radio together, like interconnection box, while using the two wire cable. I'm going to make a video about it, but I need to first find it online. So I believe that's everything I can show you right now. I can just in a quick video show you the hand crank generator. As you can see, we can we can rotate it, and over here is a hole that have a bulb inside that is indicator that device is working, and to give you indication of the correct speed. So right now it's blocked, and this is what you would like to have when you are carrying. But if you would like to use it, you are opening, you are sliding that, and there is a bulb, and. You can see it's glowing, right? And some people are saying that you have to uh, crank the device to make it glowing, but that's not correct. When it's glowing, that's, it's just like telling you that you are not uh, going enough speed. You know that the device is working, but there is not enough speed. And what you want to do, you want to crank a little faster. So it go out just like that. That's the correct speed when it's not when it's turned off. That's the correct speed. And from the manual, it says that if you crank it faster than when it goes black, it doesn't improve anything. So it's not going to recharge faster because we are. You are making that very, very, there is a regulator inside. That is the correct speed. The light is dim. And you do not have to do anything else. So yes, let's show me the last thing, the, the bottom part. This is the carrying frame, which I'm not big fan of. Something drop. I will have to clean it up. This is the plate for the carrying in case you would be interested. And over there is the model number for the receiver and transmitter. So just like I told you, the RT351. This is that unit, but as soon as you attach the amplifier you've got a PRC-352. So, please wait for other video where I'm going to show you every device from all sides just apart. This one is just a quick video about PRC-352. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're going to find it interesting. See you next time and bye-bye.